So what is going on guys, NaderBits93 here with another video and today we got a cool one that I'm going to unbox for you guys. So if you guys have followed my channel for a while, obviously you guys know I'm an iPad Pro channel and mostly the reason I'm an iPad Pro channel is because of the mobility and how easy it is to move everything around when it comes to the iPad Pro and still be able to get like intense professional work done on the go. So this company called Leipau, Leipau, however you guys want to call it. They reached out to me, they wanted to send one of their like portable secondary monitors and I was all over it guys because I've been wanting something like this for a while to be able to bring on the go with me and even though we're not moving around a lot, I am going you know from room to room and also the world is starting to open back up slowly like we're doing skeleton staff at work so being able to just kind of move around and not be stuck to a desk is the ultimate goal that I have. So what we're going to do, we're going to unbox this, we're going to try it out with the iPad Pro and try it out with something else also which I kind of wanted to test out and we're gonna get right into it guys. So let's get it going. All right, so this is the box right here. It's pretty big. You open it up. It's got a very Apple-esque feel to it. At least the white box does. When you open up the box, you are greeted with what looks to be a power brick. Yep, it's a little power brick, a USB-A power brick. I don't really know why that's there because I'm, I'm hoping that the iPad powers the screen and I, don't, and I don't need to plug it in. And this is a USB-A to USB-C cable. Ooh, you get a nice screen protector. That's always a nice little touch. Some paperwork, more paperwork, a stand that's not included, and some other accessories if you guys want to buy. So heavy marketing and then we have, I'm going to hold on to this, then we have a USB-C to C cable, it looks like, and then an HDMI cable, or HDMI to mini HDMI, which I've actually never owned, guys, but you keep looking, here's the user guide, and in the user guide, it lets you know how to actually use this monitor, whether you're using it with maybe a Samsung phone to use Dex, with a Switch to play a video game, with an Xbox, you know, it all depends, depending on what you're using, you might have to power this display a little, a little bit differently, so we're going to play around with all those things. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what that looks like. So I just wanna open up this screen here, show you guys what we're dealing with. And honestly, okay, okay, not a bad package. As you guys can see, let me grab my iPad. So this is my iPad with the Magic Keyboard 12.9 inches and the Apple Pencil. And this is the 15.6 inch secondary display, right? So you can see that it is wider. In terms of height, it's pretty similar. In terms of width, it's also very, very close. The monitor might be a little bit thicker. The monitor itself is thicker than the iPad itself, but with the case and everything around it, they're about the same width, pretty much the same weight. Honestly, the iPad might be a little bit heavier. And overall, pretty nice. This looks like a faux leather you know, casing. So put the iPad to the side, and then we open this up, see how this works. And that's the back side. So it's all magnetic. And then this is the screen. So let's set this thing up and see what we can get ourselves into, guys. Okay, guys, so I have the Lipow, Lipow, Lopow, however you guys wanna call it. I have it I'm pretty much ready to go. I included, so this is the included USB-C cable, so the male USB-C to USB-C. And right now it's only plugged into the monitor itself. And what I wanna test out is whether or not you need to be, it needs to be powered, right? So do I need to have an external power source to be able to run the iPad onto here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plug this guy into my USB-C port. You can see that the iPad recognizes it is as an external display and boom, we got it guys. So as you can see, it does recognize it as a secondary display. You don't need to have an external power source to be able to run it. That's probably more so for small devices that don't give you as much power output. So probably like a Samsung phone, like a Samsung Dex, if you wanna use this as a Dex device, maybe a Nintendo Switch, but we'll try that out in a little bit. But this is what it looks like. So honestly, you can tell that it's a little less bright than the actual iPad itself, which is expected because the iPad screen is just, you know, on another level. But this is what you're dealing with. On the left-hand side of the actual machine, you have one speaker grill, which is something that's amazing. So this has dual firing stereo speakers built in. So you don't need to worry about, you know, the iPad defaulting audio to the actual device. I'll play you guys some music and you'll and you'll be able to hear that it's very, very loud and I love that about it. Then again, on the left side, you have a mini HDMI, a full function type C port and a 3.5 millimeter port. And then on the right side, you have the power on off button, the roll key, which is what we use to navigate the on-screen menu, which I'll show you guys here to be able to adjust brightness. You just push it in and then you navigate it like so. So my brightness, I'm gonna turn it up all the way because gotta get this thing as bright as possible. 
So this is at max brightness, and you can see that it gets pretty close to what the iPhone does. And this is how you control volume too. So this is the one thing that I wish was a little bit different. You can't really control volume from the iPad itself. You have to control it from here with this little knob. I wish there was a volume rocker that they just included. But again, on the right side, you get the power button, the roll key that they're calling, and then one more type C port that's power supply only. And then another speaker guys. So this is what we're dealing with. What I wanted to test out was just to make sure A, that everything is working how it's supposed to. So you can see that it's pretty quick. There isn't any lag. If we pull up a YouTube video, We'll go to my channel real quick, see what we got going on, open up the latest video. The only way to turn the volume up, unfortunately, is again, through this little pad right here, which you have to press down, you gotta scroll down, go to volume, go down, press again. As you guys can see, the navigation is a little bit tough. But outside of that, that's the only caveat that I see would be kind of annoying to deal with because you do have to kind of jump into the menu to use the volume. But other than that, the last thing that I did want to test out is how shift screen works with this, because you guys know me, I love shift screen. And boom, you guys can tell that it takes up the entire screen and everything's looking beautiful, guys. So that's shift screen, it's working well. You can refresh anything, you know, go to the analytics if you guys want to see it, be able to scroll with two fingers, as you guys can see. And then also I'll be able to pull up, you know, Twitter, for instance, on here and be able to just kind of use both at the same time. Still have this fully functioning, Still got this and then they added, like I said, I'm gonna do a whole video kind of walking through the update of shift screen because there has been a big update too, which I really, really wanna talk to you guys about. But I wanted to show you guys this, that it does work well, go out of there and boom, you're good to go. And then one more thing that I wanted to test out was Netflix. So Netflix, obviously it is mirroring the image right now and as it should, because that's the way the iPad works, unfortunately. But if I play a movie, it should be able to play in full screen, you know, in wide angle depending on whatever the latest thing is, right? So let's open up. So just to test it out, I wanna make sure that if I play a video, it takes up the entire screen. As you guys can see, yes, it does. And there's no bezels at all. So whenever you're watching a movie, this will be nice to have, guys. So I did wanna just end it there for you guys. You know, I wanted to walk you guys through the Lapau external monitor. And I think that's gonna be a game changer, especially when things open up and you're mobile. And for instance, if I wanna go outside and just bring two screens and still be as productive as I would be, you know, at my desk, I now have that option, which is an amazing thing to have. So shout out to LaPau for sending that out. I definitely, definitely recommend this guy. I'm gonna be using it throughout my, you know, everyday carry with not only the iPad, but the work computer, a switch. I can plug an Xbox into it. All of a sudden you have a portable like gaming setup. It's just a really, really cool thing to have. It's so light and I recommend getting yourself, if not this one, get, your, get yourself or get your hands on an external portable monitor. 15.6 inches is plenty, in my opinion. I love the aspect ratio. I love how wide it is, because again, I'm so used to the iPads, four by three or whatever their aspect ratio is, which is almost like a square. But I highly recommend getting a secondary monitor to increase productivity when you're on the go, because that's the one thing we miss, especially when you have a laptop and you're like, hey, I'm gonna get a bunch of work done somewhere else. You're stuck to your 13 or 15 inch screen. It's nice to have that second monitor on the go as well, guys, and it's easy to put in your bag. But that's gonna do it for this video. I'm gonna link it below if you guys wanna check it out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, guys, peace.